Good day, everybody. This is uh, September 14th, uh, 2017. Um, we're going to look at <clears throat> some major uh, changes in, in the progressive era um, today. We finished up with Teddy Roosevelt's um, presidency yesterday, and for some classes we picked up on William Howard Taft's. And we started with Taft um, by going over some notes um, on, on Taft's presidency. We got that note sheet. If you go to Canvas, if I escape quick here, we go to Canvas quick, and you go to the progressive era, you will see where I can... Uh, you know, I'll show you exactly where you can find this. If you go all the way down, you have Taft, uh, Wilson progressive notes. We took the first half of this notes, uh, of these notes yesterday, and then we had several videos on each of these presidents. Um, if you watch each of these videos, you'll be definitely caught up for today, um, uh, just, just up until this point. And then afterwards, we started with the Wilson notes at this point. But let me just go over here on the PowerPoint for you exactly what happened. Now, for the bell ring today, um, I asked a question about four candidates running for class president. I'm going to just pick any random, you know, students in the class. They volunteered. Um, I asked if one third of the class voted for one of the nominees, and then the other two thirds vote equally split for the nominees. Who would have won? Well, if I say candidate one got the one third of the vote, here's how that would look. Candidate one got 33 percent, and the other two candidates got 22 percent, um, equally on the on their own. Um, thus, as a result, candidate one would have won the election. Now, there's one percent vote that's missing here, and it's because it equals up to 99. But you can give that to anyone, and the, the results will still be the same. Um, the point is, a president with a major election with four major candidates, um, if they, as long as they receive uh, the most votes, they're going to be fine. They don't need to get a majority. A majority is 51 percent. The candidate one here in this situation only gets 33 percent. Um, so, you know, the reason why this is super important is because um, with the election of 1912, um, we have four candidates. Uh, the fourth candidate is not listed here, but we have the three major ones, which is Democrat Woodrow Wilson, uh, progressive or bull moose president Teddy Roosevelt, and Republican, who is the incumbent, is William Howard Taft. Now, the two couple notes to look at here are very, very important. First one's the popular vote. If you look, the winning president only gets 42%. Yes, it's not this that we got in our example at that point, but it just goes to show that if you get a plurality, like we see here, 33% above everybody else, you have the ability to win every state because all of our elections here in this country are a series of um, separate popular votes. All right, so what we have here is is a um, you know a whole bunch of states that have won their own popular elections, and then once the elections are tallied, all of those states' electoral votes go to that one candidate. For instance, Pennsylvania. Teddy Roosevelt won from Pennsylvania by how much? We don't know, but it doesn't matter because all of those votes went to Teddy Roosevelt, which are up here. All right. And then same with Minnesota, South Dakota, Washington, California, uh, parts of California, excuse me, and then Michigan. Taft only won eight electoral votes, which is 1.5% of the total votes to be gained. So you can definitely see that while the popular vote shows how people voted, Eugene Debs getting 7.5%. Debs is this guy here. We definitely have... A, a plurality, but Wilson sweeps, almost sweeps the, the landslide victory of pop, of, excuse me, of, of electoral votes. So what happens is Roosevelt and Taft split up the Republican vote in this election, thus giving Wilson the Democratic, um, uh, nominee the win. Um, and, and it can, we can be safe to say here that if either Roosevelt or Taft drop out of the race, the other candidate that's remaining could have won. If you look at the popular vote, how it would have played out, it would have been a pretty sweeping victory for um, either one of those two candidates because the the, the Republican po progressives um, were very, very popular at that point because Teddy Roosevelt was such an uh, enormous figure in American life. People really, really appreciated him. All right. So after we got over this election campaign, um, we definitely see the notes here that Taft and Roosevelt split the Republican vote, thus making Wilson um, the winner as a Democrat. And then I go to ask and say, you know, does Taft really belong here? If you look at his quotes, politics makes me sick and the presidency is the lonesomest place in the world. You, know, you can argue that Taft doesn't belong here. You can also argue that Roosevelt doesn't belong here because he's not even the incumbent. He should have never been in this race, but because he's Teddy Roosevelt and he has the, you know, the, the personality of someone who can't lose, who can't be defeated, who can't be outdone, he's going to get into this race. And that's what causes both of these men the presidency and giving it to Woodrow Wilson here in the bottom right. All right, so when we look at Wilson today, this is kind of how we finished up. <clears throat> we look at Wilson's kind of policies. You know, first he lowers tariffs, which Taft failed to do. He reduces them from 40% to 25%. 
Um, he passes the 16th Amendment. We went over this yesterday, looking at the 16th Amendment being the first amendment that institutes a federal income tax on the wealthy. Anytime a wealthy makes their income, about a percentage of that what income gets taxed and it gets sent to the federal government, which is great for the government because they can use that money to create programs for those who can't help themselves, like the poor. He begins to attack trusts, um, spe spelling out uh, you know activities that businesses could not do um, with the Antitrust Act, especially the Clayton Antitrust Act, by competition buying, monopolizing, price cutting. All those actions were something that businesses could not do. You know, they were very smart to eliminate their competition, but they're not great for the consumer. You know, the consumers really get hurt by by uh, competition buying and monopolies. So, you know, the, the Antitrust Act really helps to make sure that that businesses you know play fair uh, with each other. Um, Wilson also legalized the unions, um, unions that that help protect workers' rights, their their workplace um, conditions, their pay. Um, any benefits that they could possibly have, unions will fight for that. And if they feel like they're not getting treated, they will go on strike. And we see this, uh, we talked about this on Wednesday, dealing with the coal miner strike, because, you know, these, these individuals didn't get what they wanted. They went on strike, and America needed coal. So they had a, a really strong weight, you know, to, to make a difference in their own working, in their own pay, because people needed coal, and they were able to get what they wanted because they worked in an industry that was needed for um, heat and fuel for heat during the winter, which is coal. Um, finally, Wilson sets up the Federal Trade Commission, which is the commission that helps to set up unfair business practices. This um, organization is still set up to this day and is still used to make sure that businesses do not you know, step out of line when it comes to uh, practicing their business. How do they, you know, do they do they cut prices? Are they merging with another company? Will that merger create a, a monopoly? A great example of that this past uh, year was uh, the whole Pinnacle Health and, and Hershey Medical Center merger that was in the news a lot. Um, you know, the federal government actually turned that down because they believe that a, uh, a merger between those two companies would have created a monopoly in this area for hospitals. Um, so the, the Federal Trade Commission was against that particular merger, and they, they can get they can get involved in any sort of business dealing. So it's very important to understand that these dealings are are something that uh, the the government wants to eliminate because as long as you have competition, you have companies working to get people's business, and they will lower their prices, make a better product, do whatever they need that will only benefit the consumer. So that's why competition is always good because we never see. A, a business who's going to increase prices and lower the quality of their product and, and have people still go to that industry, especially if there's other places to go. All right, so you know that's something that's very important. So that's part of Wilson's presidency. This is as far as we got today. Um, tomorrow we're going to you know pick up Wilson's presidency again and continue as, as to what he wants to do as a progressive president. All right, that's all for now. Everyone have a great day, and I'll see you again.